Hi everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So we are here for day number 15 of Defemerember and the prompts are fabric and page tab. So I'm going to have a little fun today and show you something that maybe you've seen before or maybe not. I'm also going to take the snail in a bit of a conceptual um, direction, also in a direction of wanting to use things up. So the, um, the whole idea of a snail shell really, right, is that there are these like kind of, you know, swirled up curved up kind of you know a shell right so something that I make often um, is yarn and one kind of yarn that I make is a wire core yarn where I've actually spun wool around wire and the wire is the core then I make these little beads with them and I felt like these are very snail in nature in that they have this coil hopefully you can see you see that they have this coil they have this little head um, and that these can be kind of like my more conceptual style snails I don't specifically want to use um, a picture of a snail and I wanted to use these so I'll set them aside for now now what I have lying here are two pieces of um, wash away fusible web. So essentially what you do is you can put something in between them, you can stitch it, or you can actually stitch right on it with your stitching design. And then all of this, once it's wet, will wash away completely. So one thing that I do, you need two pieces of it, uh, of the webbing. One thing I do with all my fabric scraps, is this. I keep all these little bitty bits inside this bag. It just hangs on the side of my desk. I keep fabric bits, I keep lace, um, all sorts of little things. So I'm going to today just lay all of these down to try to create a nice scrappy kind of um, piece of fabric. After I get this all covered, I'm going to pin it all over and then I'm going to go on my sewing machine and I'm going to do crazy stitching. First I will stitch the edge, then I will stitch through the entire thing in a crazy all over the place freeform stitch. Then um, I will take hot soapy water and I will wash it away. So I'll show you, I'll show you this kind of step by step once we um, we lay out all this fabric. I've really been wanting to do a project lately using some of this up because I have quite a lot of scrap going on. So the important aspect of all of this um, when you're making it is to just make sure that you're covering all the fusible web because anywhere it's not covered, you're not going to get like um, you know, you have a hole there basically when you wash it. So just really make sure that every bit of the webbing is covered. And you could do this a little more carefully than me. Like you could, you know, literally go in and lay it down like, you know, piece by piece. But I, I don't usually do that. Um, you can also use thread for this. Threads also work very well. And we can throw a little bit of our ort in here too. See, so I've got this ort. Maybe I will add an aspect of threads to this too. Why not? In this use it up kind of scenario. Just going to kind of pull them apart a little so that they're not all clumpy. Okay. Just kind of fill in a few little spots here that I see could use it. Okay, and then just bring the edge in a little. Spread it around. And I'm just going to pull it in the edge in a little bit because I don't need a ton on the edge edge because I'm just going to kind of keep it sort of central in the middle here. So we're essentially creating like a fabric sheet. All right, so I'll get the fabric out of the way. Pin it back over here. Collect any little bits that I see that are straggling around on my desk here and plunk them in any spots where I feel like I might have 
a gap. Oops. And then a few more threads. Just because I think that will be kind of cool and raggedy. Give a little bit of a nice texture. So this is a real like thread and fabric kind of soup going on now, right? Okay. So now I will lie this one on top here. Just cover it all up. Then where did I leave my pins? <clears throat> hmm. There they are. Okay, so I don't know if I have enough pins. I have a bunch of pins that I'm currently using for projects right now. So I would probably pin a little more here than what I'm going to at the moment, but I think it'll be fine. We just don't want it to fall apart. Okay, I'm gonna get this corner here. And just tuck that in there. Just tucking anything that sticks out. last side you could even throw like little bits of wool in here if you wanted to going to put a few in the middle. I don't need too many in the middle really. It's mostly the edge that I want to keep secure but this will just kind of give me like a a nice pancake sort of or a nice sandwich of something to carry right. Nothing will move around too much as I carry it over to the sewing machine which unfortunately I can't film right now because um, I don't have a camera holder over there and it's not lit as well as I would like it to be in that area. Okay. So now we have this nice fabric scrap sandwich and I can pick it up. So now, as I mentioned, I'm going to go to the sewing machine. First I'll stitch this way, then that way, all the way around the border. Then I'm going to just crazy free form all directions, removing the pins as I go. And there's going to be a lot of stitching here. So I'll do that. And then I'll come back and show it to you before the next step. All right. So I'm back from the stitching step. So I got inspired by the snail and started doing the round and round to begin with all the way to the center. Then I did kind of back and forth. And then I just kind of went all over the place. Um, so this is fully stitched. So now the next step is for me to take it to a bath of some nice hot soapy warm water to get rid of this. Um, this all of this is going to now melt away. So I'll come back once it's washed and I'll show it to you. Okay, so this has all been washed out now and you will see that it is all together, not coming apart, um, lots and lots of stitching going on. And then essentially what you're going to do, this is still wet. And what I love the most is these little bits around the edge. How fun are those? I purposely tried to get a few threads around the edges because they're a lot of fun. So what I need to do now is I need to let this dry. Then um, once it's dry, I'm going to cut it into sections that will become the size of beautiful, freeform, fun, 
page tabs. So this is also a nice way to make a journal cover if you're wondering. You could um, line it and you could cut it into you know a more traditional shape or keep it as freeform as you like. But for now, this just needs to dry. So I will be back once it is completely dry. Okay, so our fun patchy fabric is all dry now. So let's get started cutting it into some strips. I think I will cut maybe just two strips for now. I don't need to make like a million page tabs. <laughs> um, okay. So a page tab typically, you want it to be about this size, you know, back and front. So you're just kind of looking to cut like a bit of a square, right? And I think these are going to be even cuter when they're on their own. And you can sort of look at them as the individual little pieces of textile art that they are. I think these edge ones are especially nice because they have a freeform edge that's not particularly square. Okay, so we'll play with these ones. Um, so if I choose just one, maybe this one, how cute is that? It's got some gold there, very sweet. So I think what I will do, um, hmm, do I want to put these on a page or not? I don't think I do right now. I'm just going to kind of like prep them as tabs that are ready to go. Um, and let me grab the way that I want to attach the um, the other bits. It is with bulb pins, so let me grab a few. do we have of these? We have one, two, three, four, five. Two more bulb pins. There we go. <laughs> Sorry for that pause. I keep a few different kinds of metal findings together, so I just kind of have to grab at them. So what I will do with these, um, I kind of have two choices. I can bend these together like this to make this kind of a little more snail shaped. Um, and then I will put this through here. Then I will hang this through a nice sturdy piece of the fabric. I'll just stab it on through. And that can then hang there. So on my tab, I will also have this little bit hanging out let's make a few of these. I really love that one. See they're just individually very beautiful when you um, when you look at them. And my little sort of faux snail here. <laughs> And maybe it will help to visualize this on a piece of paper. So let me just grab a piece of paper so that you can see what a fun tab this would be. Right? How fun. There's one. There's two. Okay, so I'll just quickly add the rest of these. That's a nice one. 
And one thing you can do when you are collecting fabrics to do this sort of thing is you can sort them out into different colored bags. Like if you've got, say, bright colors, um, you know, blues, like, you know, depending on what you want to do, um, neutrals. So you can make interesting um, tattery sheets of fabric this way. So let's just line these up on this page so that you can see what they would look like. <clears throat> and I would likely, I mean, you could either stitch these or you could fabric tack glue them. Does not matter, I don't think, um, one way or the other. So I'm just going to set a couple like this so that you can see them both ways pretty fun. Okay, so that is my project for today. Um, this one doesn't want to stay folded. <laughs> um, so hopefully you enjoyed that and you give it a try yourself. These are so much fun. I can't even begin to tell you like the fun you can have with these. You can do all sorts of stuff with these fun patches, right? So anyways, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you tomorrow for believe it or not day 20. We have already entered the December 20 somethings. So have a great day and bye for now.